Uh, hi everyone, this is a quick video to demonstrate how to use uh, GeoGebra in 3D to investigate uh, these sorts of parametric equations. So we have a vector equation here, uh, vector r as a function of t, I suppose this could represent time, and uh, we have t times i plus sine of t times j plus the cosine of t times k. You'll recognise i hat, j hat and k hat as the basis vectors for the x the y and the z axis. So if we were uh, looking at the projection of this on the xy plane, we start by looking at what we've got here. So the x value is controlled by the parameter t. The y value is sine of t, and by direct substitution we would then see that y would be sine of x. So the projection of this curve on the xy plane would look like a sine graph. Same with the xz plane. Remember the x axis is here, the z axis is here. The xz plane is a vertical plane that uh, would contain the red x axis and the blue z axis. Uh, so once again, x equals t, z equals the cosine of t, direct substitution gives z equals cosine. The projection on this vertical plane here would be a cosine graph. Now finally the yz plane, so y equals the sine of t, x, sorry, z equals the cosine of t. Uh, easiest way to look at these is to square both sides. y squared equals sine squared t, z squared equals cosine squared. Add the two equations sine squared plus cos squared is the same as 1, and we should recognise this as the equation of a circle with radius 1, centred at the origin. That's in a projection on the yz plane, so the green axis is the y axis, the blue is the z, so that's a vertical plane running uh, 90 degrees to the other one, or they're all 90 degrees of course. Now let's see how we can model this. Uh, so first we need our parameter t, so we start with t equals say 5, hit enter, and it defaults to giving me a slider so I can change the value of t, and uh, there's no restrictions on t, t is an element of the real numbers. So it would be very tempting to write x equals t, but GeoGebra thinks x, y, and z have special meanings, so I'll instead substitute the letters a, a equals t, just a value, uh, a variable a, and of course as I change t, reflected. For b, which is my proxy for the y variable, I'll say uh, sine of t from this, or straight from here really if I want to look at it that way, the sine of t. Uh, now I should have made certain, and I forgot to do this earlier in the settings, I should have made certain that my angles are in radians. Where do I find angles? Not there by the looks of it, maybe here. There it is, angle units in radians. That's good. So there we go, back to that. Uh, now I want C as proxy for Z and that's cosine of T. Lovely. Well how do I, uh, how do I get this thing to happen? I will make a point. Now, capital letters are the, um, the case sensitive nature of GeoGebra. A capital letter means a point, and I will just make a coordinate A, B, C for my point, and there's my point, point A. As I move the slider across, I can see point A travels through three dimensional space. Let's rotate the view so I'm looking directly down the z-axis from above so this is the x y plane I'll put that back to where I started and let's just leave that move forward slowly that should be looking like a sine graph y equals the sine of x and I think it is as it travels back oh it's going back stop that let's just put you back where you belong now, why don't we take a look at the XZ plane by rotating this way. So the red axis is the X, this is Z, 
and this time I'm expecting to see what looks like a cosine graph. So here it is, the periodic function obviously. Uh, yes, we go through the coordinate 0, 1, and we have a complete cycle. Hmm. There we go. So negative maximum is around about pi, 3.14. Yep, that sounds good. So that looks like a cosine graph. Finally, we want to see if we can get a circle when we're looking at the y, z plane. So let's just turn this way. Looking directly along the x axis, or oh, can't quite make that sit where I want. Oh, close enough. That's the y axis, that's the z axis. The arrows indicate the positive direction. And here we go, let's see if we get a circle. Uh, is it radius 1? Certainly seems to be. And there we have it, that's a circle. Now, the only final uh, party trick that I want to show you here with GeoGebra is if we check the settings on this this object here, the point, I can, why can't I, there it is, I don't know why I changed that. So the, in the basic settings, I can show a trace for the object, which means as the object moves through space, it leaves a little uh, image of where it used to be. So there's my circle, lovely. That's looking on the y-axis and the z-axis, the y-z plane. Uh, there we go. We'll just make that move back to the start. Now, as I rotate, that should look like a cosine graph because that is the x-axis and the z-axis, the x-z plane. Looks like a cosine graph to me. And this should look like a sine graph with the x and the y axis. It's a little bit, a little bit tilted, but it's close enough. That's a sine graph. And finally, if I rotate the thing to look in three-dimensional space, you get a good idea that this thing is, is uh, it's like a, a spring. It's a helix. So uh, that's what this parametric equation produces. Yeah, little uh, challenge for you. See if you could make, somehow rearrange the components of this equation to make a coiled spring, a helix, that runs upwards along the vertical z-axis. But I'll leave that for you to explore and to play with. And uh, this is just a very tiny example of what GeoGebra can do. That's enough for now.